السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد so we're continuing from yesterday's for loving the Quran and we're talking about how the Quran could not have been from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and yesterday we gave a number of arguments we said that the Quran has no linguistic no grammatical mistakes and that would have been impossible for someone it also has uh, too much knowledge of other nations and history and the Arabs weren't uh, the kind of people that would translate and bring books from other cultures and they weren't a studious nor a like a, a, a group that would read and translate works from other cultures and so on we said it has too much knowledge of the future if the Prophet wrote the Quran how would he know all these things that are going to happen in the future and put them in the book and have them accurate and that it remained consistent for a period of 23 years one person writing a book for 23 years and it doesn't change, it doesn't mature, it doesn't... And we said also it does not reflect personal things happening in the life of the Prophet ﷺ. The death of Khadija radiallahu anhu, the death of Abu Talib, the year of sorrow, all of that not mentioned in the Qur'an. We want to add a few more arguments today. And that is, uh, if the Prophet ﷺ wrote the Qur'an, that he would have a motive and he would want something behind that. And you would imagine that any imposter writing a book, he would have a motive and he would possibly promote himself more than other people in his book. How many times is the Prophet ﷺ mentioned in the Qur'an? Four? Five? They're both correct. The name Muhammad appears four times in the Qur'an and the fifth one is Ahmad. So in total, if you want to get technical, يعني five times in total in Nabi ﷺ was referenced in the Qur'an. If he wrote that book, do you think his name would appear only five times? Musa alayhi salam, 136. Isa alayhi salam, just the name Isa, 25 times. But how many times was he referenced? 187 times. Harun alayhi salam, 24 times. Hud alayhi salam, 25 times. Dawood alayhi salam, 16 times. Sulaiman, 17 times. Adam alayhi salam, 25 times. Doesn't make sense that someone is going to risk his life in Arabia, attack the religion of their fathers, and to write a book and promote other people. Risking his life to promote other people doesn't make sense. Another reason why the Quran could not have written, been written by the Prophet. ﷺ. Another thing is the science in the Quran. Now, but you have to be careful with the science in the Quran. And for many years, the Muslims used to push it as if it were the number one miracle. And that's not good for da'wah because of a number of things. First of all, it's not the number one miracle of the Qur'an. And if the most amazing thing about the Qur'an were this, was the science in the Qur'an, then that would be our number one selling point and that would be why people become Muslim. You know, and, and some of you in the da'wah field, you have probably never, and I've, probably, and I've never met in my life someone who became Muslim because of the science in the Qur'an. Never. But the science in the Qur'an, if you use it properly, it's just another reason why the Quran was not written by a man. Another reason, but it's not the main reason as some people try to push it. And the other problem is that for, as you know, a lot of science has facts and theories that go both ways. So for, for all of the quote unquote scientific miracles in the Quran, there are some theories that go against them also. So don't open that door. Don't make it the number one point that you have. But you can use some things that are very firm and, and uh, Let's say, you know, you can't, dispute, uh, you can't dispute them. For example, in Surah An-Nur, Surah An-Nur verse 40, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as you know, Surah An-Nur is named after the, the verse of, of An-Nur, Allahu Nur al verse 35. Five verses later, just like these verses, that verse was showing the light of guidance of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives an example to show the darkness. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ فِي بَحْرٍ لجين. يَغْشَاهُ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ مَوْجٌ مِنْ فَوْقِهِ سَحَابٌ أَوْ كَظُلُمَاتٍ Or the parable of those who are misguided is like كَظُلُمَاتٍ في يعني بحر لجي لجي means deep so a really deep sea or ocean يَغْشَاهُ موج top by a wave on top of another wave now when you stand at the beach do you see the waves on top of each other or do they come one behind the other they come behind the other, right? But in the Quran, Allah specifically says the deep ocean, you have waves on top of each other. 
This is something that was discovered in the year 2007, brothers and sisters, by British scientists. And this is the only time we're going to reference anything British. <laughs> but by British scientists in 2007, this is just 10 years ago, discovered that, and again, just like it says, in very deep oceans, the waves are deep and on top of each other. So they said if you go 50 meters deep, you will find waves under, uh, under the surface. And they said they found waves 1.5 kilometers down, and like a mile or a little over a mile deep. And so waves on top of waves in the deep oceans, just like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. And these waves are so huge, they can be seen from outer space. They're like they're underwater waves, but they're so gigantic. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that so accurately in the Quran. What's amazing is that you know very well, and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam never went to the water, true or false. He never went to the sea or the ocean. He never saw water like that, a huge body of water. And how would he be able to describe something like this that was discovered now? Even if he were a sailor, he wouldn't have known that. So you can use things like this just as another point to show that the Quran could not have written by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And يعني, there are a number of points here and there, but when you do a full analysis, you come to conclude that there is no way the Prophet Sallallahu could have known all this stuff and could have written the Quran. And I did this exercise with a co-worker one time where we basically just listed all the skills of the Prophet ﷺ. Because we said, look at, look at people throughout history. Look at, for example, Thomas Edison. He had over 200 inventions. But realistically, they were all in the field of electricity, physics, right? He didn't also do brain surgery while he was doing other things. You find Da Vinci, he dabbled in biology a little bit, in physics a little bit, but it's still limited. And he was not like so far ahead of his time. But for the Prophet ﷺ, if he were not a genuine prophet, how did he come up with all this knowledge? So with a co-worker one time, we just listed all the, the skills of the Prophet ﷺ. From a, a leader and a lawmaker and arbitration and how to raise children, everything. We put, made a list like that. And at the end of the list, I think there were like 30 some skills that he was like far behind, be, ahead of his time at that time. So I said, is it, uh, you just tell me, how is it possible to have all these skills in a normal man who lived 1400 years ago? Unless he was special, and unless he was approached by Allah Azza wa So the co-worker said, I believe that Muhammad وسلم, is the reincarnation of all the greatest minds in human history into one person. I said, I'm going to ask you a question and just be honest with me. What do you think is more probable? That he's a reincarnation of all the greatest minds in human history into one person? Or that he was a genuine prophet of Allah. And wallahi, he looked down like this. And he said he was probably just a genuine prophet. <laughs> Naam? Yeah, for, for sure. Any way you analyze it, you're going to have to conclude that this Quran could not have been written by anyone 1400 years ago. Or a committee or anything like that. And it's, like I said yesterday, the most powerful da'wah tool. Out of a thousand people who receive the Quran with no instruction, with no follow up, nothing, 30% of them become Muslim. That's huge. That means it's a really powerful da'wah tool. And if we could, excuse the term, sell it well to people, the world would change. So, but it starts with us knowing the book of Allah Azza wa Jal first. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase our knowledge and our love for His book. Jazakumullah khairan for your attentive listening. Sallallahu alayhi wa barakatuh. Wassalamu alaikum wa barakatuh.